Everybody, welcome back. I know what you want to know, and I'm I'm just letting it sit. I'm teasing you. Yeah, the baby's here. Say hello, baby. She she doesn't want to. She's gonna start babbling. Just give her a minute. Okay, we got the lost. Um, BK one C Y B Y nine. You notice I don't even we don't even talk about the fact that we have the lost anymore. You know, we, oh no, it's the lost. It's gonna be a hard no, cause you know what? You just gotta uh, accept this is what we got. You know, the, the, you can get busy living or get busy dying. You know. I also feel like I, 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 again, I'm not a statistician. I've taken one statistics class. Uh, in, in college, I'll have you know I did pretty well in it. I'm not gonna uh, bury the lead on that one. However, I will say that also I did lose a lot of marks on a fairly major project because the teacher said there was a two-page uh, maximum, and I didn't realize uh, that you know, like like I let me put it this way: I didn't realize that included figures. <laughs> I included a lot of figures, and it was like you know seven pages long, and he was like, "Hey, I docked you." Like five percent extra for every page over the page limit that you were, and I was like, "Oh, okay. I see how it is." And I was like, "You know, it's my first defense. Sorry, sorry for the pretty uh, graphs and and tables and stuff like that. Would it be possible for, uh, you know, you to have some leniency here?" And he sent me back the Bugs Bunny be uh, meme, basically. No. In real life, your boss will have even stricter page limits, and you won't have a calculator in your pocket either, so, you know, you better get used to this. Uh, anyway, long story short, uh, hold on. Let's not die on the third room here. I'm not actually bitter about it. The course was actually pretty instructive. Like, you know, it, it's one of those things where, like, you know, sometimes your teacher teaches you a lesson, but it's not the lesson that they think they're teaching you. Like, the lesson that, uh... Uh, that they thought they were teaching me is like, you know, in the real world, you gotta be, uh, you know, strict with your limits and stuff like that. You gotta, you know, really read the work order. And, and I mean, there is a good lesson in there. What the lesson taught uh, me was that, you know, the content of the actual paper was substantially less important than just uh, the appearance that it adhered to the rigorous rule set that he put out there. Which I thought was kind of ironic for a class about correlation and causation. But look, I'm not, like, bitter about it or anything. You know, that was in 2007. It's a long time ago. He's probably learned his lesson by now. What do you think, baby? She's like, I don't understand. This bit's a, bit, a little bit uh, <laughs> advanced for a baby. You see, baby, like it's one of those things. What if I showed you a graph and I said that, you know, as ice cream sales go up, so do shark attacks. You would be like, what? We got to stop buying ice cream. And I would be like, nah. It's because they both happen in the summertime. Come on, it's like you're not even using uh, your critical thinking there. Anyway, we're getting an orbital. We got Guppy's head out of a golden chest. This is a, a positive start, but obviously we don't have anything uh, quite yet that we really look to as like a guaranteed... Uh, guaranteed loss sort of enabler. What a, what a large floor, by the way. What a large floor. If this is not a secret room, we will leave. Okay, goodbye. Um, no, uh, we're gonna we're going to try this. This is the greatest day of my life. Okay. If we were the keeper, we, we just won the run right there. But what are we looking for uh, out of this? What are we looking for out of 25 cents? What do you need as the lost, baby? Nine lives. Nine lives is a very big one. Uh, you know what? Let's have a little Mia culpa. Full health. Pretty much useless, obviously. Um... Yeah, I, I oftentimes take PhD and then don't actually take pills. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this PhD and I'm gonna endeavor to use pills afterwards in the hopes of getting some statistical improvements, you know, finding some secret rooms and, and so on and so forth. Oh, what do you think, baby? I really want this compass. We got one bomb. It could be next to the spawn. It'd be much nicer if it just showed up on a fire or something. I'm willing to, to spend the bomb to look for it. Oh my god, baby. That's incredible. Hold on, let me caffeinate here. It is a little bit earlier. Everything in my day got shifted about an hour earlier because I'm starting the stream an hour earlier today to uh, accommodate some 
North American East and uh, Europe West dads. We play some Valorant. Excited. Look, I know there's that senior citizen team in Counter-Strike Global Offensive that's made up of, like, all 70-year-olds. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that we can be, like, the second senior citizen team in esports. What do you think? The baby's like, you are pretty old. <laughs> yeah, you are pretty ancient, Dad. Oh, isn't that funny? She says it like I do. Wow. It's not just because I made up her voice in my head right there. Um... Okay, don't, don't step on the button, it's unnecessary. Just get a move on here. Everything's actually, like, on this run, it's it's solid so far. So solid that we, we almost can pivot into a little bit heavier banter, I think, uh, if I had any anecdotes to give you. Um, which I don't. Uh, although I was at the grocery store yesterday, I'm... I'm you know, happy to hit you with some anecdotes from my time at the grocery store. My anecdotes include buying uh, a box of cereal and some cold brew coffee. And uh, asking the cashier to repeat herself a few times because, uh, you know, and again, I understand. But if, if you naturally are kind of a quiet speaker, and then, you know, now you, you wear the mask, and then, you know, my ears... My hearing is not so bad, but it's not so good either. Um, you know, you find yourself in a position where I, I'm going to be saying, like, excuse me now and then, and I apologize for it, but it's, a, it's the way of the world. Okay, so skipping stones literally just, like, exists just to, just to make your tears look cooler. I don't even know if there's any synergies that they, um, they kind of create, but I'm, I'm happy to see some kind of visual variety. Hey, baby! Sometimes it's, it, a father's gaze is like a... It's a serotonin beam, you know? She's a little bit uh, unhappy. She's a little bit discontented. You just give her uh, your full attention for like, you know, five seconds, and it, it's actually like getting hit with the Care Bear stare. Although I'm pretty sure in the show, I don't know, it's been a while, I was never a huge fan of the Care Bears, but pretty sure the Care Bears mostly use the Care Bear stare to turn evil things good, something like that. I, I can't really remember. Um, okay, the belly button. Incredible. Thanks. Thanks for tapeworm. Um, we will take both. Neither of them are really any useful at all, but that's, you know, that's life. That's life in Isaac in, in 2021. Wouldn't you suggest the same, baby? Got a lot of, uh, you know, stuff that's not necessarily that valuable in the game. I think we covered that on the tier list uh, appropriately. Don't necessarily need to take it any further than that. Uh, a judgment is a bit of an interesting conundrum. We have no money, and we can't afford to give HP. But pills! Man, if we could just get some pills. I just gotta... Th that's apropos of nothing at all. I just have to keep reminding myself that if you see pills, take them. <laughs> you got the hiccups, baby. It's our secret room. There's some room... Th this room is like a strong indicator towards secret rooms. Some rooms are just like, you know, mild indicators. This one is like, I know exactly what I'm getting into. You got the hiccups, baby. What's wrong? I was gonna say, I thought you were gangster. <laughs> yeah, everybody's gangster till the hiccups come out, right? She's She has no idea what I'm you talking about or referencing in the slightest. Um... Dude, okay, all of a sudden we got money. We'll, we'll probably go... Uh, yeah, we definitely do not want that, but we'll probably go peep the, uh... The boss trap room as well. Okay, okay, I gotta think about this. Uh, habit is fine. No, habit is useless. I shouldn't have done that. Alright. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> uh, like, I, 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 at first I, I think I've gotten the... Look! It's 9.08 in the morning. That's not super early, but, you know, we're still digesting the first cup of coffee here. Um, still figuring it out, okay? I apologize. We're making some inefficient plays, without a doubt. Um, I think I'm, I'm getting the lost confused with the Keeper. On a logical level, I would not get the lost and the Keeper confused. The lost is fairly easy. The Keeper is quite difficult. Um, on a... Uh, you know, sometimes your brain... It has two different, uh, you know, axes 
Oh, it, I mean, it's got many different axes, I suppose, but, you know, there's the logical part of your brain, which is where, like, if I asked you to consciously think about something, you would tell me what you think about it, but you would use, you know, the, the stronger executive reasoning portions of your, you know, prefrontal cortex. And then there's, like, the unconscious thought, which is, like, the... The decisions you make um, without actually, you know, passing those to higher order uh, decision making processes, um, you know, or evaluation processes, if you will. So, you know, I, I guess like, you know, a good example is like when you get like emotional, sometimes you can say things you regret. Now, in your head, you know, if you were listening to this situation or if you were watching it in a movie or something like that, you would be like, oh, they shouldn't have said that. But, you know, when you're when you're living it yourself, you, you get a little clouded. Now, this is like a, a, a microcosm of that right here. Like, as of right now, I've made some keeper plays as the Lost. I can't believe we made it out of that room, by the way. We made some keeper-type plays as the Lost, and, uh, you know, we're going to endeavor to think things through. Well, look at that. <laughs> Were your ears burning? So I don't really want to play this judgment. I kind of just threw it down just to see where we stand. In all likelihood, it's going to pay out with HP. HP is not a good uh, value proposition for us. You know, we can use this money on the shop to accomplish, you know, much greater things. Ideally. One makes you larger. P PhD coming through in the clutch. Okay, telepills is actually very good. We can hold telepills. I think we're going to blow you up. Give me this deal with the devil chance. Baby. She do be having the hiccups. Anyway, yeah, I've got essentially no anecdotes whatsoever. You know how it is. It's it's a Wednesday in February in the middle of a global pandemic and we've got a four-month-old infant. If you were ever to concoct a situation where there was a, a limited amount of stories, um, this would certainly be uh, one of them, I would say. Just kind of, you know, it's not bad like I'm enjoying life, but it's kind of, it's a quiet enjoyment. You know, it's the quiet life of, uh, of the contented retiree. It's not like the jet-setting life of a early 30s media mogul that I'm used to. Where, you know, I could go to the grocery store like upwards of two to three times a week. Now I'm going to the grocery store like once every ten days or something like that. I was thinking, and, and again, you know, stop me if, if we take this over the line, I guess, but... You ever think about, like... And I'm gonna be very very careful with my phrasing. You ever think about how um, much living through the uh, bubonic plague in Europe in the 1300s would have sucked? Like, I don't know if you've read uh, Albert Camus' uh, the, the Plague. Um, but essentially, and I think it's it's relatable now more than, you know more than when anyone originally read it in all likelihood, but, um, you know, in the novel he talks about how, like, when you look back at it through history, you expect that, you know, if you live through a pandemic sort of, uh, situation, then, you know, almost like every day is kind of like, you know, the movie Contagion. I mean, that's not what he says, because it was not contemporaneous with his, uh, existence, but you get what I mean. Um, this is not going super well right now, by the way. We can always telepills out if things get truly dangerous. Um, but instead, it's really just like a lot of, uh, I mean, obviously like some anxiety-inducing situations now and then. Um, but also just a lot of tedium and, and kind of like, uh, and, and boredom and, and almost drudgery. And then you look back on it later and you go like, well, that sucked really bad. Um, I was thinking about like, man, it must have been so much worse during like the... The, the bubonic plague. I mean, obviously, it was like almost 800 years ago, right? That it, it I mean, the, the major outbreak happened, but just think like, first off, it's not like they're doing DoorDash, right? I know that it's, you might think, oh, that's where he's going with this one. It's not the advances in modern medicine, it's DoorDash. But like, okay, like we know at least what causes the situation that we're in right now. We know that, you know, germ theory is uh, scientifically valid. 
right, baby? Oh, I think she disagreed with me for a second there. That's that's a spicy take. I'm gonna wait until you're old enough for the discourse. Um, but she, uh, or no, but it, you know, we we know that it's like you know, stay away from other people. Um, you know, try not to sneeze in each other's mouths and, and so on and so forth. Um, so we can, you know, structure our, our modern lives in such a way that we minimize our contact with people as much as possible. But back in the day, like, even if you knew, even if you were like, I'm pretty sure this is something you could catch from, you know, other people and also rats. You still gotta, like, you know, go down to the local well or whatever and, you know, get your water. You still gotta head to the, uh, to the market in the morning and... You know, get your stuff. Nobody's masked up. You're, uh, you know, it, it, it seems like you're just kind of like riding it out, right? That's, that's wild. I don't know. This is like a half-baked thesis for sure. I'm just, I'm throwing it out here. Like, and I mean, even beyond that, like, I mean, if anything, oh man, I can't believe we're going to get into it again. But, you know, it kind of makes you even more annoyed that you're like, bro, you, we got Netflix. You, you can't. Stop going out to the uh, the tiki bar for like a couple of uh, maybe like a year and a half at this point. <laughs> but still, you can't stop going to the dang tiki bar. We got Netflix, we got Disney Plus, we got CBS All Access, we got Peacock, we got Hulu, we got Crave, we got HBO and HBO Max. Like uh, we we got Shutter, we got um, I forget the, the there's some that are like science fiction themed, there's some that are like old movie themed. We got cable TV, we got on demand, we got YouTube, we got Twitch, we got Facebook.gg, we got YouTube Live. And people still they they can't in, stay inside. It's anyway. Look, wait, I didn't mean to necessarily uh, go off on a rant here. Baby, you are you are loving it, huh? Okay, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I decided. I don't want to fight Mega Fatty. I do want Pushpin. Um, I don't know, like, AAA battery, it seems like it doesn't do anything for us right now. I think I got it confused with 9 volt, where it uh, would recharge our item if it was on one charge, but it doesn't work that way. That's fine. That's fine, it happens. I go. Instead. We're, we're gonna hold it in the hopes that maybe later we find something more uh, valuable. It, it's you know, Yes, it's useless right now, so why hold? Well, it could be worth a lot later, you know? It uh, And the other thing is that Tapeworm is essentially at this point quite meaningless unless we get like a staggering amount of range downgrades. You're a very happy baby this morning. Wait, I'm not, I, don't, I hope that didn't sound like I was admonishing you. Agu, dude, I would, I was, you know, I don't know how you do this. I, I don't, do you? I don't trust adults who lie. <laughs> Wait, I don't know where I'm going with this. Okay, because here's how this is gonna start. All right, there are some adults who are like, I wake up fresh and crispy every morning. I love it. Oh, I look forward to the crack of dawn every day. I get up and I do uh, 90 minutes of guided meditation, and then you know. My uh, substantial uh, dom uh, domestic staff prepares me a beautiful breakfast of fresh berries picked from my garden and stuff like that. I don't trust that, okay? Like, I, I am like, you're a liar. Every adult that I know that I like as a human being does not enjoy waking up, necessarily. Like, it's not like, oh, another day, you know, but when you wake up, like, you're not at your best. You're not at the peak of your uh, mental and physical condition, right? So whenever an adult is like, you know, oh, I did the, my favorite, like, I love going to bed. Not just, uh, you know, for a, like, brief lapse in consciousness and then feeling, like, rested the next day. But it's like, when you feel tired, it's t it, it takes you some age to get here, I think. But, you know, when you're hungry and you're eating a meal and you're like, I know in, a, like, 15 minutes I'm going to feel amazing. That, that's basically what sleep is like for me right now. When I'm in bed, I'm like, oh my god. I'm tired, and I'm doing the thing that's gonna relieve my tiredness eventually. Like, it's it's a feeling of great self-fulfillment, I would say. Um, but when I, when I hear about adults that are like, you know, every day without an alarm clock, I wake up at the crack of dawn, and it's beautiful, and I salute the sun god. I'm like, I don't believe you, something went wrong. Some, like, I, I, I want to see footage. Not, and not cherry-picked footage. I want to see live CCTV footage from, you know, I want to I sample the 12th day of every month on a two-year window. I, wanna, I want you to prove it. You shouldn't have any problems proving it if you're saying it, you know? 
Plus, you're trying to sell me this, uh, you know, yoga course on lynda.com. However, the flip side of that is that I really feel like babies go to sleep badly but wake up amazingly. Like, it, it's, it brightens my day a lot when I, uh, I look on the baby monitor and, you know, maybe it's like 7 a.m. She's sort of like kind of kicking around and rolling a little bit. And then I go in there and I open the door very gently. And I turn on the... Uh, Andrew WK's first album to 11 on the stereo, and I, I ain't got nothing to lose. I'm gonna throw it away and talk to you. She looks good, and it's true. Uh, you know, okay, I'm... That's actually, it's a story from my college years. In my, in my first year of... <laughs> okay, so, like, my, my dorm room uh, roommate in freshman year was kind of an a-hole, but I was also kind of an a-hole. You know, we, we were like, I mean, we're friends, kind of, to this day. We're like, I don't know, contentious acquaintances who are both happy for each other's successes. We have a rapport, let's put it that way. Um, it's like a Ross Rachel sort of thing, right? Um, but he used to, like, you know, he, he was a, a STEM lord, uh, and, and still is. Uh, but, you know, some days I wouldn't have classes until like 9.30, and he would have classes at 8.30. So he'd wake up at like 7 in the morning. And just blast, like, out of the silent planet by Iron Maiden, like, as loud as he could on his, you know, crappy computer speakers. Oh, man. Those were the days. Anyway. But it's nice, you know, you walk in and, and she's, uh, she's, like, extremely happy to see you. She smiles immediately. Babies don't need a cup of coffee. Although, while we're talking about that, that's an interesting idea. Nobody's really tapped into the uncaffeinated baby market yet, huh? That that could be a like a billion dollar a year industry. Now we're talking caffeinated pacifiers. Well, I suppose we should at least walk into this stuff. I mean, th there's probably like a genuine case to be made about ditching Guppy's head and actually just going with we need to go deeper. And I, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I think it's actually, there's a strategic play here. We're not gonna be able to use it that much. For sure. Um, however, and dude, God, I just noticed our DPS is so friggin' horrible. <laughs> it's, what, what is wrong with this game? Look, there's a new rule, okay? There's a new rule in Isaac. For every meme item you wish to add, you now need to add at least 0 0.5 DPS upgrades, okay? It's it, We're gonna call it the ratio. You must maintain the ratio in order to respect the enjoyment of your player base. Every time you add an item into the game that uh, essentially does nothing, statistically speaking, you must add one half of a tiers upgrade, damage upgrade, piercing shot, uh, you know, all stats, etc., etc. How do you add half an item? Well, you just, you know, wait till you get a, a, a value where if you apply the modulo of 2 to it, it returns 0. Okay, Point Dexter? Like, honestly, I shouldn't be... You want me to fizz buzz for you? You want me to hold, you want me to hold it for you when you go to the bathroom? Like, come on, you, you can answer some of these questions for yourselves. Okay, sorry, I got a little, I got a little upset there. I got a little... But it's an inane question, okay? Teacher, what if you have an odd number? Well, then, then you wait 10 seconds, okay? Now, we still... We got plenty of teleportation. I should also be using the shovel more often to see if we can get to uh, the, the black market. And this is a, a very, very bad run. I almost wonder if, if I didn't just, like... Hey, baby. <laughs> If I didn't just, like, Cinderella this whole son of a gun right here, and, uh, you know, it, before I noticed that our damage was kind of bad, I think everything was kind of fine. Now that I, I look at our damage and I see that it sucks, I'm like, wait a minute. This is a, this is a ripoff. What do you, we gotta check? We're gonna joke her out of here? Incubus is, is actually an incredible item. Now, of course, we're not exactly over the moon um, with the uh, our current DPS, but that's fine. <clears throat> you know, we'll, it's, it's a great item to get, and more options, you know, uh, we, we took it in the hopes that it would 
pay a dividend for us pretty soon. We're going to have to change that saying soon. Nobody cares about dividends anymore. Everybody's, hey, stop paying a dividend. We're, we're looking for a higher growth multiple. Hey, look, we don't need to get into that. I apologize. <laughs> Nobody cares. But anyway, I'm just saying, whatever. Some of my colleagues don't respect dividends. What is the problem with cash in hand? I don't understand. They don't want cash today. They say, don't give me cash today. Give me 1.1 times that cash in 10 years. Oh, my God. I cannot feed my family with a PE multiple. Um, we want uh, nothing here. Maybe a card? Maybe a card, but probably nothing. <clears throat> okay, take me home, country roads, to the skulls. I blow up. There are three skulls. Zero rewards. Take me home to the skulls. Ah, nah, 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 nah. Uh, I don't like this room. That was my impression of everybody on uh, Love It or List It. <laughs> I don't like this room. Dude, I gotta tell... Actually, as much as I've, I think the shovel is like a bold play, I actually think that the teleporter... I, I, and I, this is how I know the item is the right choice. In my head there, I concocted like so many different opposing arguments for why I should not take uh, the teleporter. Uh, the shovel could be more fun. It could play out with the black market, and also it's just kind of annoying to have to use the teleporter from time to time. But essentially, and, and I know we got hit, but I think we can get out of this room without risking it too much, because all these enemies die in one hit. Um, careful, careful. Uh, you know what? I don't even want that money, because it's too close to that spiky chest. But as long as, in, in most situations, that's very good, as long as we use the teleporter anytime we get hit then we're going to be extremely pleased there there is a temptation to also use the teleporter this isn't even the depths too huh <laughs> there's a temptation to also use the teleporter um to uh maybe teleport two bosses faster but i'm not gonna sweat that just yet okay cool another upgrade that means absolutely nothing let's move on then All right, and we have no idea where we are. Let's get weird then. So this uh, sucks pretty badly. I'm not trying to... Okay. We're... I just got spooked. I'm just going to be honest. I got a little scared. I'm happy we got out of there. I'm not trying to say this is a, a loss necessarily, but like it's just one of those times where like... Sure. I, you just, you, you kind of get sick of being right sometimes. It doesn't happen to me often because I have a lot of bad takes. Um, but, but just like in general, you're like, how many runs is this, you know, maybe in the last like three months where we're on the final floor of like the start of the game and we have received no help in the form of damage per second. You know, okay, we got Incubus. But apart from that, which we, we only got, you know, as a result of getting a, uh, a Joker card to begin with, which is like an unreliable source. I guess we could have, you know, it's kind of my bad. We, I guess, I suppose it's fairly obvious we should have perthrowed uh, the HP upgrade, right? That way we could have gotten, um, you know, oh, sorry, we already got the belly button. My mistake. We could have gotten uh, Dad's Lucky Coin. Mm, how about that? That extra range upgrade would really be really be hitting the spot right now. You, you, here's another option for something that you could do. You could just remove stats from the game entirely, or, or at least remove all statistical upgrades from the game entirely, and just instead, uh, you know, only uh, have unrelated items, you know, items that, uh, you know, hey, hey, this item turns your, it gives you an atomic wedgie or something like that. We don't need tears upgrades, HP, stinky stuff like that anymore. Um, I think we have to go Dry Baby, and I think Dry Baby's good enough to not perthrow for sure. Um, I wish we could find a way to make Bloody Lust work. Because, uh, it, it really is a big get for us to, but you know what? I I'll live with that. that that's a solid perthrow right there, but... Um, we really do need some way to improve our, our DPS. And we, we do have an out now, maybe like 99 bombs. <laughs> it's something. 
And these are we got good mega sad bombs, and we got a decent number of them. Uh, we got contract from below. But there's a uh, there's a lot to be done still. Now we did we hit our item room. Yes. We did not hit our shop. I've decided at at 27 minutes. I'm gonna pull the baby excuse card. This is the baby excuse card. Can be used by a parent one time per day. Uh, description of card. Uh, tap this card to uh, get an excuse token. Use all excuse tokens and destroy this card. Return this card to the graveyard. Um, to uh, um, to destroy a target permanent uh, chore. Target permanent chore has been destroyed. Okay. Now the great news for me is I also have a dig through time and a treasure cruise, and I can use those in combination to uh, to mill uh, through my own graveyard. And and by milling through my own graveyard, I can fetch uh, another uh, baby excuse card. And and really, like this is my baby excuse uh, build right now. This is my baby excuse build. Um. Oh my. So I mean, it's it's a blue deck for sure. Don't get me wrong. I don't play Magic at all. I, I don't. I don't. I used to. Uh, I, but I don't follow the. I don't follow the information. So I apologize if any of that didn't make sense. <laughs> hey, this is actually pretty good. We got we got some good uh, DPS upgrades via Abaddon and Pentagram. Could still use a Tears upgrade. Like I'm not. I don't know. I, f I feel like, you know, we we go the whole game without DPS. If they give us two DPS upgrades and then we start going, oh, thank you, game. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this charity. I'm like, nah, man. Where were you when I really needed you, you know? Where were you when I was when I was suffering on, you know, the catacombs too? And you were like, here's a, you know, your ninth HP upgrade as, as the lost. You weren't there, man. And now that I've, you know, demonstrated I won't go down so easily. You want some of the credit. I see how it is. You know, you're, you're trying to buy high. I don't accept it. I don't like this room. I'm a little frightened. I am hopeful. If we just kind of hug the wall here, we'll be good to go. I still, by the way, I would not predict a win on this one just yet. Uh, it's a little ambitious. I, I do think teleporter helps us out an awful lot. You know, we, we kind of need to like get hit and then teleport and, and end up in a bad room on top of that and then get hit again. Which is why this like hermit card is so nice to just like... I mean, if, if you consider it to have roughly the same utility as, as teleport at this point, it essentially halves the odds of a catastrophic failure. I, it might actually do more than halve the odds now that I think about it, because, you know, it, it, look, we don't need to get into it. Um, we might as well take this, I suppose, and we will head up to the cathedral. Because, like, if the odds of getting a bad room are, like, 1 in 4, and then, you know, uh, let's just say that that's static, 1 in 4, um, then to teleport from a bad room into another bad room is 1 in 4 squared, so it's 1 in 4 to the 16. To teleport into a bad room... Or to, to enter a bad room, teleport into another bad room right after, and then a hermit card after that into another bad room is a, uh, well, it just happened. <laughs> no, it, it didn't happen yet because we didn't hermit card. That, that was our 1 in 16 chance. Um, so it would be 1 in 64. All right, take me home, country roads to the place I belong. Sorry, I, I don't even really like the song. Them, I know that's sacrilegious. Okay, well, I've 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 done it again. Thank you, dry baby. Get him, get him. Leave. <laughs> I don't know why I got attached to using my orbital there. In fact, like if you could concoct. The worst time to ever use an orbital, it would probably be a situation quite similar to this. Let's just stand back. You know, this is not a it's not an amazing run. Ten rate of fire, seven damage. Like if we were any other character, we would be cruising right now, without a doubt. We we would have so much HP and then the relic on top of that, and then I mean, if we were any other character, you know, if we had had the D4, we would have just D4'd ourselves into a winning run. You know how it is. Don't get hit by that. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, we're saved, okay. Now, Blue Baby is not a difficult final boss. All we gotta do, you, you kinda just walk yourself in there. You, you, you be patient. The number one thing I would say is if you can be patient against Blue Baby, you know, you're, you're gonna win. But you gotta get to Blue Baby first. You gotta get to Blue Baby first. And that's what we're worried about right now. We do have contract from below. We do have contract from below. This could be exciting. Oh, Curse of the Unknown. <laughs> uh, so I think eyeball tears are kind of bad, but I'm gonna take them because I think it's funny. All right, let's do that. Uh, and then, do we not? Uh, oh, we do have the compasses. Just bottom right, bottom right. I have no idea what's gonna happen to our shots here. We we have head of the keeper, uh, stone skipping, and also. Uh, eyeball Tears, which I forget the name of. I've, I've, half of the medical terms that I know have come from this game, but sometimes they escape me. Keep it moving. I'm, I'm not being uh, oh, hasty about my, my teleporter usage here. Let's, you know, just play it very cool, very coy. We got seven luck and contract from below, so I am kind of... Assuming at some point I'm gonna come across some items. <laughs> In fact, I, uh, you know, you might. Oh, am I out of here? Let's let's get out of here. You might think I've, uh, you know, laid the conversation on a little thick. You know, I've been a little bit acerbic with my criticism, but to, to quote me from Minecraft yesterday, you know, if if they give me no items on this floor, like. I'm gonna engage in a tirade that's gonna make Dostoevsky look like Mr. Rogers. Sorry, it's a little bit of a pretentious statement. I've read one Dostoevsky novel in my entire life, and to be honest, I uh, let, let's say let's put it this way: I appreciated it, but I did not really care for it. It's one of those things where I was like, I, I could totally understand why people would be into this, but I am bored. And because there's going to be a follow-up question, um, it's notes from underground. Well, if you hated that one, then you gotta read, you know, <laughs> War and Peace. Actually, we read the the Brothers Karamazov, which is like a, nov a novella contained within. Um, I, I maybe I can't remember if it's War and Peace or I think it's Crimes and Punishments. Actually, I, now that I think about it, but. Crime and Punishment. Crimes and Punishments is one of those Sherlock Holmes games. <laughs> the best of the Sherlock Holmes games, by the way, I might add, but... Can I tell you something? There's some irony here. I wish that I had kept, um... Didn't I already fight you? Let me out, please. Uh, we are, we are far from home, like Spider-Man. Where's my items? Where's my items? Should've just gone and fought the boss, use the hermit if things went wrong. It was all- it's patience, man. It's just patience. <clears throat> anyway, what was I talking about? I don't know. Yeah, we read it in, like, first year English class in- in university. Okay, there, there's my items. I want my phone call. I want my texts. <laughs> I still- that's from the Spelunky 2 series. I still think that's a great bit. The, the millennial who a phone call is useless for them at the... And I'm a millennial, I can make the joke. Um, who, who a phone call is useless for them at the jail because they don't know anybody's number. Except like their best friends from 7th grade. I want my text. Can I tell you, I, I, I... And again, this is the ongoing saga of getting slightly older year over year. Um, there's been a lot of articles lately about how uh, like Gen Z doesn't like millennials. Uh, let me hit you with, uh, because at first, I was like, you know what? That sucks, you know, because we're, I, look, it's just the natural progression of life. Like, you come into the world as the youngest generation, and then you go, I hate the older generations, look at all these problems they caused, and then, like, you know, you're gonna fix them, but maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't, and then, you know, 
Maybe, maybe your generation is beset by, you know, two quote-unquote once-in-a-lifetime recessions and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right as you're having these formative moments where, to be honest, you should be establishing your career. But instead, and then an aging populace that, you know, did not save for retirement uh, properly continues to stay in uh, positions of the workforce uh, that, that keeps you from being able to move up uh in an enterprise level to, you know, the role from which... I'm just saying we have a... You know, basically my generation is kind of like notoriously overqualified, if that makes sense, but yet still underemployed. Uh, um, so, you know, there's a tendency, I think, to be like... Uh, you know, oh, why do the Zoomers hate us? You know, like we are, we're, we're, we're still cool. We're still, we're still hip. We're with it. We made Inconvenient Truth make like a hundred million dollars at the box office, right? I'm gonna, I, and that was my initial hunch. Then I realized, A, I don't care. And B, good. It's good. I think it's good for the Zoomers that they don't like the Millennials. Can I explain why? That is the natural progression of, of life here. You always take pot shots at the generation that's like one older than you or two older than you. Three older than you? I don't know. I don't know how many people are out there like ragging on, you know, <laughs> like the silent generation or whatever. <laughs> Yo, you guys in the pre-income tax days of 1910. How dare you? How dare you? Anyway, we, we won. Can you believe it? Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps us a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!